In this video, I'm going to talk about identity elements, inverse elements, and zero elements. Again, we're still working with abstract algebras and operations, so let's get right into these definitions. We say that EL is a left identity for some operation if every A in our set A has that EL with the operation A is equal to A. So in other words, a left identity combined with another element will give you back that other element. So we'll go with some examples later, but just as a nice demonstration, let's say with multiplication, if I take one times any number A, I get A back. And it is a left identity if this only, well, if this holds for the left side. We say that it is a right identity if it holds for the right side of the operation. So in other words, Multiplication is special because these identity elements do work for both sides. So in other words, we have a times one is equal to a as well. So those are identity elements. And identity elements, well, they say, okay, here's this thing I'm working with. I'm just gonna send that thing back to itself. In other words, the thing that the identity element works with does not change. And we've seen this with identity functions before. So earlier in this lecture series, I did a lecture on functions and compositions of functions, and we introduced the identity functions IDB and IDA. So essentially, IDB is a left identity function, IDA is a right identity function, and essentially just maps a function back to itself. It's like if I were to take f of one and I send it to one, I take f of two and I send it to two, so on, and for any n, it just equals n. It's an identity function, very similar with identity elements. Okay, so if an operation is commutative, then the left identity is equal to the right identity, and then we just get rid of the subscripts and call it e. So in other words, e operation a is equal to a operation e, which is equal to a. Some examples are the real numbers and addition. So for instance, if I take, say, 6 plus 0, this is equal to 0 plus 6 because it's commutative, and this is equal to 6. So essentially, we have some number a plus the identity is equal to the identity plus some number a, which just gives us that number back. With multiplication, the identity element is just 1. So for instance, 6 times 1 is equal to 1 times 6, which is equal to 6. Or a times e is equal to e times a, which is equal to a. So those are identity elements. Inverse elements, well, we say that a inverse l is a left inverse of a, if for some operation and every a, the left inverse of a with an operation on a gives you back the identity. So in this case, as an example, let's say with addition, if I have, well, what's the identity for addition? The identity for addition is zero. Let's say I have some number six. Well, what is the inverse of six? What number takes six back to zero? Well, the answer here is negative six. So negative six is a left inverse of six. Okay, what about a right inverse? Well much like identities have left identities and right identities, inverses have left inverses and right inverses. So in this case, same thing. If we have six plus something is equal to zero, what is that inverse that takes us back to the identity? Well, that would be negative six. So we'd say negative six is a right inverse of six for addition under real numbers or integers. And if they're commutative, then we just say that a inverse is a two-sided inverse of a. So again, like we've seen before with addition, we just take a plus negative a gives us zero. And remember, zero is the identity element. And this is for any number a. So more concretely, two plus negative two is equal to zero. And then negative two plus two is equal to zero. So in addition, we could say that a inverse under addition is just equal to negative a. 
What about under multiplication? So what is the identity element for multiplication? Well, for multiplication, we have a times something is equal to one because one is the identity element for multiplication. So if we multiply a by something, what gives us one? Well, if we multiply it by one over a, then we get one back. So more concretely, if we have three, we have to multiply it by something to get one. We do three multiplied by one third, or we could do one third multiplied by three is equal to one. So one third is the inverse of three under multiplication. Three is the inverse of one third under multiplication. So in other words, we could write that a inverse for multiplication is equal to one divided by a. The last thing we'll talk about are zeros. So for any operation, we say zero L is a left zero of the operation. If for every A in our set, the zero with the operation on A just gives us the zero back. So a nice one with multiplication, of course, is just zero times any number A is equal to zero. This is pretty straightforward to see. In fact, if we take a right zero, we can do a right zero as well because it's commutative. So a times zero equals zero for any number a. More concretely, zero times six is equal to zero and six times zero is equal to zero. So this is what we mean by a zero. It is this magical number or even a set in some cases that will pull whatever it's working with to itself. So what are some examples of zeros we've seen before? I just showed multiplication, so let's do the third example on the bottom with the real numbers of multiplication. We would pick our zero, so something like six times zero is equal to zero, and zero times six is equal to zero. So we can say that the zero L, or in this case the zero for a multiplication in this sense, is just zero. What about with the intersection? Well, if I take the universe and I take the intersection with the empty set, I get the empty set back. What if I take any set A with the empty set as an intersection? Well, I just get the empty set back. So in other words, the zero for intersection is just the empty set. So in this case, it's not a number, it is a set, and the operation is intersection. What about with the union operator? Well, with the union operator, let's say I take u union the universe. Well, that just gives us the universe. That's not exciting. What about the empty set union the universe? Well, then I get the universe back. What if I take any set with the universe? Well, then I just get the universe back with union. So the zero for the union operation is the universe. So Hopefully now we understand the concepts of identities, inverses, and zeros. And of course, these are very important when confirming notions about group theory, which we'll encounter eventually. So having the ideas of identities, inverses, and zeros will help you with your understanding of group theory in a few videos when we get to it. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them.